Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Last night, after I was done recording this segment, we got the breaking news that Jeffrey Berman was out as U.S. prosecutor at the SDNY. Bill Barr came out and said that Berman had resigned and that he would be replaced forthright. Well, Berman says that that did not occur, he did not resign, and he's not going anywhere yet. So what we have are, is, is an old-fashioned standoff here between Berman and Barr. And you know like when there's a, a, a book or a movie where you have two bad guys facing off? That's how I feel in this situation. I'm not a fan of Barr, as you all know. I find Barr to be just nothing more than a retread. Uh, I hate to even use the, the term deep state, but if there is ever anybody who was swimming around in the swamp for years and years and years and who was part of the deep state, it's Barr. I know a lot of people who support the president aren't going to want to hear that, but it's a fact. Barr worked with George Bush's criminal organization as well, and that's what George Bush was, an absolute criminal, a war criminal. So I'm not a big fan of Barr. I don't trust Barr to be this great arbiter of justice, and I certainly don't trust Barr to tell the truth. The man has not done anything like that. Since he's been involved with this case, that's for sure. Oh, I saw the video. You can trust me. Don't worry about it. It's obviously a suicide. Just trust what I have to say to you. Meanwhile, the guy has never said a word that I, that I can trust. So, again, I know it's hard to swallow if you're still involved in partisanship, if you're still playing tribal games. It's hard to swallow, and you don't want to accept the fact that Barr isn't a good guy. That bar doesn't care about the survivors. That bar is probably as corrupt as the rest of them. I know it's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard truth. Look, hard truths are never easy to take. And there's been a lot of hard truths that have occurred during this case that have changed my entire mind and my entire outset about uh, uh, mindset, I mean, about how I feel in regards to politics and those who we choose to put into positions to lead us. I used to be involved in tribalism myself. I used to feel like, oh, this is my side, this is your side. And I know how wrong I was now. During the Bush administration, when I was younger and I had my emotions played on, and I was gaslit, and I was, you know, all fired up about 9-11, these sons of bitches, Barr and company, came in, and they made up all these ludicrous, stupid-ass lies about what, uh, what occurred in Iraq, etc., etc. And I bought all of it hook, line, and sinker. And I will never, ever, 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 ever be gaslit again. That is the promise I made to myself then. And moving forward, I have always maintained that I will never, ever believe the narrative that is fed to me ever again. And I will always dig deeper to really find the truth. And when you get to that point, you finally say to yourself, well, it's not my side or their side. It's really us against them, as in all of us, the citizens, Republican, Democrat, everything in between, against these disgusting-ass elites who really believe that they can manipulate the law and our lives on a regular basis, and none of us are ever going to stand up and try to stop them. And they believe that because it's happened for so long. They believe that because the narrative that they ship out has been run with for so long. And their minions in the legacy media continue to bow and scrape to the establishment, hoping beyond hope for just a little bit of access. It's gross to watch. It is really gross to watch these so-called journalists sacrifice everything that journalism should be in hopes of a little bit of access. And it doesn't matter who the president is. We see it. it this has been going on for four administrations now, okay? Four administrations. And here we are. So if you're still stuck on thinking this is a left or a right thing, 
I implore you to dig deeper because it is so much deeper than that in this story. Now, I'm not talking about everything else you do in your life. Hey, whatever, I don't, what, I, I don't care. You know, if you want to be you know, a political tribalist, great, whatever. When you're, when you're looking at this case, however, if you're looking at this case from anywhere besides a neutral middle ground, then you're doing your, yourself and the survivors a disservice. All right, let's jump into this article. Another article from Law and Crime. So I decided to use this article because, as usual, Law and Crime really breaks it down well, and they get into some of the legalese of the situation, which is important to add context to it, right? We don't just want to hear an article or read an article from uh, one of these outlets that's looking to just drop a hit piece. That's all fine and well, and it feels good, and the visceral reaction feels good to it, but that really doesn't do anything. That just puts us back into an echo chamber. So that's why I like to read articles from places like Law and Crime in situations like this, because they always have a little bit more to offer than, say, CNN. Lawandcrime.com. Headline, why Attorney General Barr may not have the legal authority to force out the U.S. Attorney for the SDNY. Another article by Matt Nahum. Attorney General William Barr, a.k.a. Droopy Dog, announced Friday night that the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, who was appointed to his position by a federal court, was resigning from his post and being replaced by an acting U.S. Attorney who has never been a prosecutor. So, let me get this straight. As much as I don't like Berman, and I am on record saying that, right, folks? You all know how I feel about all of these prosecutors in this situation, how I feel about how the government has handled this, and most certainly how I feel about how Barr has handled this. But you're going to get rid of Berman and bring in somebody who has never even been a prosecutor to handle cases such as going after Jeffrey Epstein's associates? That's where we're at as a country? That's what we're doing. That's what we think is a good idea. Well, I can't agree with that. I don't think it's a good idea. And once again, I find myself on opposing sides from Attorney General William Barr. Shocker. The problem is that SDNY's Jeffrey Berman doesn't see it the same way, and he says he has no intention of stepping down. That's likely because Berman thinks he is entitled, by federal law, to remain in that role until the, Republic, the, the, Republic, the Republican, excuse me, led Senate confirms a nominee. Well, you know that the Republican led Senate is going to streamline this. They're going to try and make it as quick as possible. And we know that the Democrats will try and hold it up just, just on GP, right? When in reality, both sides should be working together to put somebody in that post that is acceptable to not only both sides, but to the public. They won't do that, though. What they'll do is they'll want another yes man in there, if, if possible, somebody that's going to beat to the Trump uh, team's drum. And who cares? It, uh, you know, justice be damned. And again, folks, it's all such a game of WWE, who the president is, and oh, what they say and what they do. It's just such, it's such bullshit. It really is just such bullshit at this point. And I'm so... I'm so over all of it, the, the stupid-ass political fighting we see on TV between these people on a regular basis, the divisiveness, the this one hates that one, and how they try and convince the torch people that the pitchfork people are trying to take their torches, and how we keep falling for it as a populace, when in reality, when in reality, it should be all of us who are taken advantage of by these people marching in the streets together in solidarity, instead of letting them split us into different groups of, oh, you're black, or you're white, or you're Italian, or you're this, or you're that. And then what they do is they get us all at each other's throats. That way, we can't all rise up and put the pitchforks and the torches together and go after who really need going after. And that's what they continue to do. And that's why you see all of this infighting. And that's why you see all of this rage porn in the legacy media. They have one goal, folks. To keep the electorate split. Berman oversaw the prosecution of former Trump lawyer Michael Cohen. His office also brought criminal cases against Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani's former business associates, Lev Parnas, and Igor Fruman. Berman's office is currently investigating Giuliani. And under Berman's leadership, 
SDNY famously brought sex trafficking charges against the since-deceased Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, wait, whoa, 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 hold on. Let's back up a minute here, okay? Do you imagine if Berman spent as much time going after Jeffrey Epstein's associates as he did going after Rudy Giuliani and Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman? Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I will never sit here for one second and try and t tell you that Rudy Giuliani isn't another slickster, because he is. Lev Parnas, not too familiar with him, and Igor Fruman, again, not too familiar with him either. But guess who I am familiar with? Ghislaine Maxwell, Jean-Luc Brunel. Why aren't these people being prosecuted? Why aren't they being chased down with the same vigor that you're chasing down so-called Trump associates? Again, because it's about politics. It's not about the survivors. It's not about equal justice under the law. It's about spiking political footballs for the SDNY. And honestly, the SDNY, the Justice Department, they're all a joke at this point. How can anyone take these people seriously? But Barr said Friday that, with Berman out, an acting replacement is ready to step in, and that President Donald Trump already has a permanent replacement for Berman in mind. It's been reported that Barr forced Berman out. Look, I don't doubt it for a second. I don't doubt it for one second. Bill Barr is like Darth Vader. When this guy steps into the room, the song should come on. That's what should play every time this dude walks into a room. Because he's like Darth Vader. I have zero faith in Bill Barr to do the right thing. And I know that's going to upset a lot of people. And I don't care. Honestly, I really don't care. Because it's, it's how I feel. I'm never going to hold back. And especially when it comes to this case, this case is so important to me that anyone who plays politics with it is automatically categorized as part of the enemy camp. Because when you're playing politics with this case and you're doing it to try and slam home a point on one side or the other, when it's obvious that both sides of the aisle were dipping their fingers and their toes in Jeffrey Epstein's disgusting, dirty pool, well, it makes you look like the asshole, folks. It makes you look like the one who is living in an echo chamber. And remember, this goes for both sides of the aisle. I am pleased to announce that President Trump intends to nominate Jay Clayton, currently the chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, to serve as the next United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Jay Clayton, huh? You mean the guy with ties to Deutsche Bank? That same Jay Clayton? This is an absolute joke, and I don't know how anyone who is looking at this from an unbiased perspective can look at the way Bill Barr is conducting himself and not have concerns, and not wonder what the hell is truly going on. Jay Clayton is nothing more than another money man. Jay Clayton is nothing more than another Wall Street toady. But I guess that's fine. We'll just have him. I mean, it's such a joke. This is exactly what we need, huh? A guy from the Securities and Exchange Commissions as the new United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, especially considering all of the financial crimes that were committed in the wake of Jeffrey Epstein, this could be construed as putting somebody in charge in the SDNY that's going to be someone who looks favorably ab upon guys like uh, Jess Staley or Glenn Dubin or Wexner. How does Barr or anybody else think that this is quality or this is a good idea? I just don't understand how anyone can support this kind of shit right now. I get it. There's hyper-partisans that are going to support whatever Bill Barr does, and I get it. They're the same people. They're the same face of the, uh, the different face of the same coin of, of during the Obama administration when you had all of the people that would support Eric Holder no matter what he did. You see, folks, this has been going on in this country for ever. Okay, we have been getting dicked around, screwed over, and while the Republicans and the Democrats get out on TV and they engage in their political theater, what's really happening is people like you and I 
average people in this country are getting screwed on a regular basis. And if you think you and I are getting screwed, just take a look at what these survivors have had to go through for all of these decades and still have to go through. And now, another slap in the face as Jay Clayton is getting ready to be the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. You couldn't even make this up if you wanted to. For the past three years, Jay has been an extraordinarily successful SEC chairman overseeing efforts to modernize regulation of the capital markets, protect Main Street investors, enhance American competitiveness, and address challenges ranging from cybersecurity issues to the COVID-19 pandemic. The statement from Barr began, well, yeah, of course, that's the statement that Barr is going to run. He's going to run a favorable report on his guy, right? Look, this is the guy for the job. You can trust me just like you can trust me about the videos. No, sorry, Barr. You haven't built any trust. You haven't even built an iota of trust with me. So how am I going to trust anything you have to say here? Clayton's no better than Berman. In fact, he might even be worse. His management experience and expertise in financial regulation give him an I ideal background to lead the United States Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York, and he will be a worthy successor to the many historic figures who have held that post. And again, this is what really scares me, folks. This is what bothers me the most, that this man is part of the financial sector. Every single disgusting bastard we talk about pretty much is part of the financial sector. So you mean to tell me this guy wasn't friendly with any of them? He didn't rub shoulders with Jess Staley? He didn't rub shoulders with uh, Les Wexner or Glenn Dubin? Of course he did. He worked for Deutsche Bank. And we all know that Deutsche Bank is home of money laundering. So you see, folks, when you start putting the pieces together and you start adding one plus one, but it comes up at three, you know you have an issue. You know things are not right. And this whole situation does not pass the sniff test, in my humble opinion. On behalf of the president, I thank Jay for accepting this nomination, and I look forward to working with him soon. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure you look forward to giving him the playbook and telling him what he's going to do, right, Mr. Barr? Clayton has never been a prosecutor, but he is nonetheless in line to lead, perhaps, the most storied U.S. Attorney's Office in the nation. Now, how many times have I talked about that? How the SDNY throughout history has always been uh, basically one of the better prosecutorial offices in the nation. But now it's a joke. It's a, a mockery. It's a parody of itself. And we have Preet Bahara to thank for that. We have Berman to thank for that. We have Maureen Comey to thank for that. And all of the other clowns that were using their office to try and play politics. Barr said that in lieu of Clayton's confirmation by the Senate, he himself recommended that Trump appoint Craig Carpenito, the U.S. attorney for the District of New Jersey, to step in as acting SDNY U.S. attorney. I'm not too familiar with Mr. Carpen Car Carpenito. I'll uh, take a look a little bit deeper in to see who he is and see what he's about. But I, none of, I, I don't like any of this. I don't like any of this. This is so sudden and so out of the blue and on a Friday night in hopes that they could bury the story. It, it smacks of gross negligence. Barr said that Carpenito's appointment would be effective as of July 3rd and that he expected Berman to work with Carpenito to ensure a smooth transition. Barr thanked Berman and said the outgoing U.S. attorney for SDNY is stepping down after two and a half years of service as United States attorney for the Southern District of New York. Well, I wonder, this, the, the cynic in me wonders, did Queen Elizabeth make a phone call to change this? Did Queen Elizabeth call in some favors and say, hey, look, we need to get somebody more favorable to uh, old uh, Joe Exotic of the Windsor family here? We're really getting crushed with this PR. I don't want to think like that, right? I know that's, that's almost going down a road of conspiratorial nonsense, but at the same time, how can we be sure of anything at this point? There are a couple of problems with this. First of all, Berman, who donated to the Trump campaign in 2016, released a statement of his own saying that he, he has no intention of stepping down and that he has not done so. 
So it's not like Berman came into office as this big anti-Trumper. And believe me, folks, there are a lot of them. I know the people on the left aren't going to want to hear it, but a lot of people have done lost their minds living with their anti-Trump sentiments. A lot of people have gone overboard. You can criticize the guy, and you can, you can shit talk him, and you can dislike him, and all of that jazz. But the, the, the way some people have gone about this is not only detrimental to their own health, it's detrimental to their cause because they look like they have a bone to pick, right? An axe to grind as opposed to just trying to get to the truth. At the end of the day, folks, we just want to get to the truth. And if the Democrats and the left and the so-called resistance was really serious about doing that, they would have dug into the financials from the very beginning. Because, folks, again, I know a lot of you aren't going to want to hear this, but it's a fact. The whole entire, entire Russia investigation was predicated on bullshit. Point blank, period. If we have anyone to blame at this point, for giving us Trump and for giving us what we have now, it is the Democrats themselves. I learned in a press release from the Attorney General tonight that I was stepping down as United States Attorney, Berman said. I have not resigned, and I have no intention of resigning my position, to which I was appointed by the judges of the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York. I will step down when a presidentially appointed nominee is confirmed by the Senate. Until then, our investigations will move forward without delay or interruption. I cherish every day that I work with the men and women in this office to pursue justice without fear or favor, and intend to ensure that this office's important cases continue unimpeded. Berman, you're an absolute liar, too. All right. If that was the case, you have all the evidence you need. Why aren't you going after Maxwell? Why hasn't she been arrested? What are you waiting for? Why hasn't Jean-Luc Brunel been arrested? What are you waiting for? Why are you engaging in petty politics from the bench? Berman's statement contained the second problem with the scenario. While the U.S. Senate will undoubtedly take up Clayton's nomination quickly and can likely ensure his installment on a party-line vote, Berman noted that he was appointed to his position by the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, not the president. Again, look, I don't, I don't like any of this and how the U.S. Senator just, I mean, the U.S. Senators just rubber, uh, rubber stamp some of these judges is really disturbing. And that goes for all administrations. Some of these people, some of these judges, and some of these appointees have no business whatsoever being in the positions they're in. And they get nominated by these uh, senators, and I just, I shake my head. You look at the history of these people, and you say, how in the hell are these people even nominated? Barr is one of them. Just like Eric Holder was another, last administration. You see, folks, my rage is against the machine. That means all of them. All of these people are making our lives more difficult. All of these people are making it way too hard to pursue justice in this Jeffrey Epstein case. In 2018, then-Attorney General Sessions first appointed Berman as interim SDNY U.S. Attorney. After the 120-day interim stint expired, the court appointed Berman to his current position. Trump never sent Berman's nomination to the Senate. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Berman was never nominated by the Senate and confirmed by the Senate, I guess. And he was uh, put in this position by the... Um, the, the court appointed Berman to his position, not a nomination by the Senate. That's pretty interesting. I never even knew that, to be honest with you. The April 2018 court order said that Berman was appointed U.S. attorney unless the President of the United States nominates and the Senate confirms a United States attorney for this district. So it's, it seems like Berman is hanging his hat on this statement here and the order of the court. And to be honest with you, if this is what the court ordered, I would think that the Trump administration would have to jump through some hoops here to make things happen. Or, of course, they could just be ham-fisted uh, ham like usual with Barr in charge and do whatever they want. I mean, you know, because that's pretty, uh, pretty much the norm for every administration. So why should, you know, the, why should the, the attorney general 
have to follow the laws, right? Those laws aren't for them. Those laws, they're only for me and you. The court cited to 28U.S.C. 546D, which says, if an appointment expires under subsection C2, the district court for such district may appoint a United States attorney to serve until the vacancy is filled. The order of appointment by the court shall be filed with the clerk of the court. So what this is saying is that the court has the power to fill that role if, um, if, it, if the appointment expires under the subsection of C2. Then the court can fill the vacancy uh, until the Senate appoints somebody. According to University of Texas law professor Stephen Vladek, there's a pretty good argument that, per the plain language of 28U.S.C.546D, Berman gets to keep serving in that post until the vacancy is filled through Senate confirmation of a permanent, permanent successor. So he definitely has an argument here. Berman definitely has an argument here. But it really comes down to how ham-fisted and heavy-fisted Barr is going to be. And if the past is going to tell us anything about the future, we know that Barr is very, very ham-fisted. In short, per Vladek, the statute suggests that Car Carpenito cannot replace Berman in an acting role, and in the unlikely scenario that Clayton's nomination dwindles and dies in Mitch McConnell's Senate, Berman would remain in his position. Berman's statement reflected this view. So what we have gearing up here is a battle within the SDNY. Meanwhile, if they're busy battling and Berman's trying to fight for his professional life, how are they going to dedicate the proper amount of resources and the proper amount of time into bringing the survivors the justice they need and deserve? I can answer that. They won't. It'll be put on the back burner again. All because the two tribes have to have a fight. And guess who suffers? Once again, the little people. Once again, us. Georgetown University, University law professor Marty Lederman countered, however, that the DOJ's longstanding view, as expressed through the Office of Legal Counsel, is that the president can remove the court-appointed Berman while Barr can't. And I guess that makes sense, right? As the president, all of these people work for you. So I understand when a president comes in and he wants to bring in his own attorney, his own, his own uh, lawyers, his own prosecutors. I get that. But in the middle of an election season, five months out from an election, on a Friday night, Trump and Barr think that this is a good idea? I got news for you. It's not. It's right up there with your stupid-ass idea of having Dershowitz come as one of your lawyers. Bad idea, bad optics, and terrible leadership. This responds to your request concerning whether the power to remove a U.S. attorney appointed by a district court pursuant to 28U.S.C. 546 is vested in the president, the attorney general, or the appointing court. To our knowledge, the question is one of first impression. Pursuant to 28U.S.C. 541A, the president appoints U.S. attorneys by and with the advice and consent of the Senate. Subsection C of that section provides that each United States attorney is subject to removal by the president. The question is whether the president's removal power under subsection C extends to U.S. attorneys appointed by the court pursuant to 546 or whether they can be removed only by the court that appointed them. In our view, the first interpretation is the correct one. Whether the president should exercise the power of removal, of course, is a question of policy. We note in this connection that Kerry v. United States 132 CT CL.397, 1955, stands for the proposition that the president need not actually sign removal papers, but he may leave it to the attorney general the implementation of an oral presidential decision to remove a U.S. attorney appointed with the advice and consent of the Senate. Indeed, that the president may authorize the attorney general to do what he feels is warranted and then orally approve the action taken by the attorney general. Carry at 401-403.4, but we do not recommend this course of action in the situation at hand, since the incumbent U.S. attorney apparently has the backing of the district court. 
the court might react unfavorably to any action that does not carefully comport with the letter of the statute. That is a lot of legalese there, folks. And it's basically just explaining how Trump has the authority to do it. But in this situation, they certainly don't suggest that he does do it, considering the court is the one who appointed this man. So what we're doing here is we're gearing up for another fight along political lines, more tribalism and less actual legal work into the Jeffrey Epstein case. I'll tell you, folks, if it wasn't for all of you, and especially the brave survivors who have come forward and how, who have led this charge, we wouldn't be anywhere near where we're at now. And in fact, it looks like they're, they're, they're positioning themselves to try and forget about this case almost. Well, breaking news, we're not going to allow it. If I have to fly to New York and go and protest in front of the SDNY, then God damn it, that's what I'm going to do. I have had enough, folks. I have had enough, okay? I have had enough from both of them. Both sides of the aisle, I have had enough from all of them. I've had a belly full. New York law professor Ryan Goodman pointed to the United States v. Solomon case, which happens to have been decided in the SDNY. That decision noted that the president may, at any time, remove the, the judicially appointed United States attorney pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 504, regardless of the nature of his appointment. Uh, well, look, if there's precedent for this happening and the precedent has already happened within the SDNY, they will be hard-pressed to fight this order. Regardless of who is right, it seems politically charged legal... Uh, po excuse me. Regardless of who is right, it seems a politically charged legal fight could be brewing that could determine the future of certain sensitive investigations. That is a very important statement there. And folks, we have to hold these people accountable. We cannot let them shelf this investigation and i'm telling you right now whatever it has to whatever we have to do to make sure that they listen to us is what we need to do because if they're trying and attempting to muddy the the, the water some more if they're attempting to make it so this case is not pursued well they're going to be in for the fight of their lives former sdny u.s attorney preet barara this guy is such a tool, folks. Don't buy into anything about this dude. Preet Bahara was the beginning of the end for the SDNY, in my opinion. The guy's a clown. He's not, very, he's not a very good lawyer. And, and remember, he is engaged in tribalism. Anything you hear from people engaging in tribalism, you must take with a bit of salt. Because at the end of the day, people who put their stupid-ass political party before the welfare of the nation and the welfare of the rule of law are part of the problem. Former SDNY U.S. Attorney Preet Bara, who knows what it is like to be fired by President Trump, immediately raised the question, why does a president get rid of his own hand-picked U.S. attorney in SDNY on a Friday night less than five months before the election? I agree with some of that. Why would he get rid of this guy five months before the election on a Friday night? Simple. Trump and Barr wanted to bury the news. Now, the other part here, though. Preet Barra is obviously another guy who is engaged in, in, in uh, tribalism. He doesn't like Trump. He has never liked Trump. So what he has to say, I take with a grain of salt as well. All of these people are all trying to push their narrative forward. And guess what? If they have to gaslight you to get it done, then so be it. Because you do not matter to them. None of these people. Not on the left, not on the right. If you think Schumer cares about you any more than Mitch McConnell cares about you, you have not been paying attention. It is time for the electorate. It is time for the pitchforks and the torches to stop fighting with one another. It is time for everybody to come together and hold all of these elected officials accountable. And furthermore, it is time for the SDNY and the United States Department of Justice to arrest Ghislaine Maxwell. 
If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. Inside of the description box, you'll find the link to the article, and you will also find the link to the GoFundMe account if you would like to help the podcast. All right, folks, I will be back later on, and we're going to do it all over again.